Today we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Studio G paints and the Gaia Note series paints. Let's get it. Hey guys, Plum Therapist here, helping you guys to get the most out of your model kits. If you haven't done so already and want to stay up to date on any time I come out with a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Today, I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the Studio G paints and Guy Note series paints. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too, so without further ado, let's head over to my paint station. Alright, so here's the rundown of how the things are going to go. On the left side here, I have the Gaian color here, and on the right side here, I have the Studio G G paints. Um, for the Gaia notes, I have a pure black, which is a gloss, a semi-gloss white, and then a bright red, which is actually a gloss as well. Initially, I was going to lay them down on some primers for gray spoons, and then eventually use some of the pink spoons for the bright reds, but what you're going to find out is that I had a little bit of trouble with the Gaia Note series colors because I haven't used them before, but we'll get to that when we cross that bridge. So ultimately, we're going to start with the whites, go to the blacks, and eventually end on the reds, which we'll get to in a minute. The first paint we're going to use is the matte whites from the Studio G Paint series. Again, coming from an acrylic background, painting with the Studio G Paint series was just a real blast because of how easy it was. If you haven't watched my original review of the Studio G Paint series, I'm going to link a card up in the corner so you guys can check it out. But spraying with the G Paint series has always been really fun. Um, this is my second time just playing around with it on spoons. I've painted one kit with it so far, and I'm currently working on another one with the Studio G Paint series. But overall, coverage is great. I enjoy spraying with it. And ultimately, I feel like it's such a great product, and it'd be interesting to see how it does compared to the guy note series speaking of guy the next thing we're going to do is look at the guy note series gloss white so this is the first time i've ever painted with gaia and so what i had it did as i thinned it down to a one part paint to one and a half parts primer and compared to the studio g paint series the guy notes comes out a little bit thinner and I was a little bit of afraid of it actually running, but compared to the Studio G paints, which was a little bit thinner, I think the Gaia went on a little bit easier given that it was thinner and actually didn't experience any running from the paint. Um, I was spraying it a little bit further away and we'll get to that in a little bit, but as you can kind of see, I have a little bit of space between um, the airbrush and the spoon, which you'll see how that affects the finish later on. Next up is the G paint series matte red, followed by the Gaia color series bright red here. Again, being more familiar with the G Paint series paint, I felt more comfortable going just straight into it, um, starting with the tacky coat as you can see here, before finally coming back in and getting that full coverage that you look for when you're trying to paint your pieces. As you can see here, the bright red, or the regular red of the G Paint series has got a nice color to it, and this is over just the regular gray primer. When compared to the Guy Note series paint, again, the paint feels a little bit thinner, which you can see in this tacky coat. And as I start to fill it out, you can see that gloss starting to take shape, but isn't quite perfect. So in a second, when we take a look at the G paint here, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pause it just so we can take a quick look at that finish. And what we can see is that that glossy finish isn't that same reflectiveness that we wanna look for when we're doing a gloss finish. And that becomes very apparent when we take a look and compare the black paints here. So jumping straight over to the Gaia paint, what you're going to notice is that as I'm putting down this base layer, I have a good distance between the airbrush and the actual spoon. And that's what I was comfortable with when spraying with the G paints. But what I found out for a gloss coat, that's not really what you want to get. What you want to do is you want to get close enough to that where as the paint goes down, it becomes a really high shine gloss. Compare that to what I go ahead and repaint the um, gloss black, you can tell that at first I start off a little bit further away, but eventually I start to move a little bit closer just to get really that nice glossy coverage. And as you see, the black starts to go on a little bit cleaner, starts to make like a much more smooth surface and ultimately brings out that shine that you're looking for in a gloss finish here. When put side by side, you can see the difference between the Gaia notes on the left side and the G paint on the right side. While you look at the G paint, it does look like it's a metallic finish. It's actually just the light that it is reflecting. Um, it's definitely coming out to more of a satin finish as opposed to a matte finish. And I think that just has to do with how I actually laid down the paints, not to do with the paints themselves. When you look at the Gaia notes, you definitely can see that high gloss and you can see the reflection of my hands in the paints there as I wave. You can see just how reflective a gloss finish is compared to a matte or even a satin finish. 
With that in mind, I went ahead and redid the red paints here. And as you can see, I went ahead and started with the Guy Note series um, bright red paints, going for that gloss finish. And as you can tell already, I've got that really high reflective reds coming out there, as opposed to the first time. I went ahead and redid the G series paints because I wanted to give it um, as even of a chance as possible. So I skipped the primer for both of them. I just went straight onto the spoon. So we can see the difference just based in color and coverage alone. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put them side by side here. And as you can see, the Guy Note series paints it's definitely a much more reflective finish. You can definitely see my reflection as I wave to the camera in the reds. And on the G Paint series, you can tell that it's definitely a softer, more matte finish. So here's the final lineup of all the paints. I definitely recommend the Studio G Paint series if you want to look for something that's um, matte. But if you need the gloss, the guy is your definite go-to. But I wouldn't say that the G Paint is a lower quality or um, a lesser quality than the Guy Notes. I definitely say they're about the same. And so I'd recommend anybody who's maybe thinking about the G Series paints, even if you paint with Gaia for a while, give it a shot, see if you like the matte finish, and then go from there. Hey, if you found some value in this video, go ahead and leave a like. It lets me know you appreciate the content. If you haven't done so already and want to stay up to date on any time I come out with a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some value in this video, maybe learning whether or not you want to pick up some Gaia notes or some Studio G paints. Remember, take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you, and I'll see you in the next one.